Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll show you how you can install a virtual monitor on your Windows 10 or 11 PC. This is a follow-up from a previous video I made, but this is a new method and it works much better. With this method, you can select any resolution you can think of, any refresh rate you can think of, and it also supports HDR if you're running Windows 11. Let's get into the video. To start, we're going to open up a web browser, I'm using Firefox, and go to the link in the description. This should take you to a GitHub page of the driver. This isn't one I've made, it's just something I found on GitHub that's really helpful. Scroll down to download stable version and select Windows 10 and 11 for no HDR. I'll show you how to install HDR later. Click on the zip file and it should start downloading. You can then click the folder icon to open up where it's located, which should be in your downloads. We're then going to right click on the zip file, select extract all, uncheck show extracted files when complete and click extract. Here's the folder. So we're going to open up that folder and there you'll have an IDD sample driver folder. We're going to copy this folder and then we're going to go to our C drive, what um, Windows is installed on. We're going to paste this folder directly in our C drive. If we go into this folder, you can see it's now directly on the C drive, and we've got a batch file that says install cert. We're going to right click this and select run as administrator. You might get a pop up, just click more info and then run anyway. A command prompt will open and it will run the script to install the driver. You can exit that out when it's done. Now we need to open device manager, which you can search for in the search bar. We're going to click on any item in the drop down and then click action and then add legacy hardware. Click next on the first page that pops up. Then select install the hardware that I manually select from a list. You can then click next again and then select display adapters that should be in the list there somewhere. Once you've selected display adapters, you can click next again and then click on have disk. We're going to go to that folder that had all those files before. Have disk, then browse, go to our C drive, into the IDD sample driver folder that we pasted before and select the driver file there. You can then click OK. You'll see it says virtual display driver then next, next again and it will start to install the driver. It shouldn't take long and then you can click finish and that's all it takes to install one virtual monitor. If we go to settings and go to display settings we can see that we've now got an added monitor, number 4 there. If you select the added monitor you can scroll down and change the display resolution. As you can see there are a lot of options ranging from all the way up to 10,000 by 432 pixels. Not sure how useful that is, but at least you've got a bunch of different options to choose from. So we'll just select 1080p, and then we can go to advanced display, and that's where you can select the refresh rate you want. As you can see there's quite a few options, so it's quite flexible. I'm going to open another instance of OBS. So in OBS you can open a display capture and then select your virtual monitor and then you can actually see what's going on on the screen. So if I move my mouse all the way over to the new virtual monitor and drag notepad onto that monitor, as you can see it's functioning as a virtual monitor that's not there in person but the computer's still rendering to it. This is a little hard to read just with the small pixels so we're going to full screen this in OBS. There we go, so I'm viewing the virtual monitor on my main physical monitor. Okay, so what if we want HDR? As you can see, HDR isn't supported on the default driver, but we can get HDR working with a different driver from the same person. We're just going to uninstall this non-HDR monitor 
you go to device manager, go to display adapters, right click on the virtual display and select uninstall device. Click uninstall again and it will be removed from your system and as you can see it's removed from the display settings as well. To get the HDR driver go back to the same GitHub page, scroll down again and go to download stable version, this time we'll select the HDR Windows 11 release. Now you will need Windows 11 for this HDR to work. Scroll down again and download the HDR zip file. It's a similar process as before, we'll open up where it's located and then unzip it. I'll just quickly delete the old file so we don't get confused. Right click extract all and then extract the files to a new folder. So keep clicking until you find the IDD sample driver folder again, so we'll copy this. Then we'll go to our C drive again, delete the old folder that we pasted before, and paste in the new folder. Go into there, and again we're just going to right click on install cert and run as administrator. You probably don't need to do this, but there's no harm in doing it again. Once that's installed, we can exit that and go back to Device Manager. Again, we're just going to click anywhere in the list, then go to Action, Add Legacy Hardware, it's the same as before, Next, and then install the hardware that's manually selected, Display Adapters, Next again, and then Have Disk, and it should be in the same location, we'll select that um, driver file but this time when we click OK you'll see it says device HDR then we'll click next and we'll install it by clicking next again OK so as you can see the device has been installed and we can go back to the display settings pick a resolution that works for us and if you scroll up you can see use HDR now it's available and we can tick it on so that's how you get HDR support working now if you want to install multiple monitors you just follow the device manager process again and again just for however many monitors you want to add so it's as simple as that and for uninstalling as we did before you just right click on the monitors and click uninstall Thanks for watching the video, if it's been helpful please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you've got any questions leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you. If you'd like to support the channel and get early access to videos you can support me on Coffee. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next video.